I eat. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now this video is going to be a little bit different than it normally is. I know I'm supposed to be doing Spookmas right now, but just like bear, bear with me. We got a little bit of an extra video coming at you. But I was actually given my first ever BJD from a lovely duo called, I'm going to butcher their name. Dragitar. I will, I will, I will put it here and I will have all their links and stuff in the description down below, but I'm collabing with them. I, they have provided me a BJD and I'm going to be customizing it. Now their BJD is called Salvador and the reason why they made it is because they want to encourage beginners and intermediates and advanced anybody to just customize a BJD and to have fun with it. Like. All of it is based around creativity and I absolutely love that so I was very excited when they asked me. So that is what we're going to be doing today. I had a few designs here and there that I wanted to do but I ended up going with, <laughs> not fall anymore, but I ended up going with a fall themed of a monarch butterfly. But I look outside right now and it is currently snowing so it is no longer fall. <laughs> But that is what we're going to be working on just to keep the fall vibes alive. Okay, let's get started. So first we are going to unbox this BJD Dragon. And let me just say that their packaging is stellar. Like even the box feels nice, you guys. Like I, you just know when you get a box and you touch it and you're just like, oh. Oh, that's a nice box. It is gold embellished with their logo and look at how it the BJD is actually packaged in this like cotton silk lining. I just I need to step up my game. <laughs> Unboxing this lovely little thing made me realize that oh I need to need to be a little fancier with my packaging because this is just so fancy and it is it feels very premium unboxing it and here is the BJD it is just it looks so cute in its little pose just waiting to be unboxed and say hello to the world and um, they package it really nicely they it arrived perfectly there was no issues there was no damage to the box there's no damage to the BJD so they clearly know what they are doing and the piece just looks wonderful and it's it's just really cool to have like my first BGD so I was just like I was a really giddy giddy little person just like ooh look <laughs> So I figured for all the customizing I wanted to do, the first step would to be to take apart the BJD. And so that would mean undoing all the elastic on the inside. And I wanted to be very careful about this because I didn't, I ended up having to cut it out for the legs just because I couldn't get them untied. But I really tried to keep the string as complete as possible because I wanted to make sure that I could reference it later when I had to go back and restring the piece because I didn't know how long anything needed to be or you know I this is completely new to me and totally out of my element I've never done anything like this before I've never like I said this is my first BJD so I got no idea what I am doing but after I took it apart I decided that I wanted to dye the pieces because I want to do a butterfly so I want to make sure that the limbs are a lot darker and I was concerned that if I just did paint that it wouldn't really work and it would chip off very easy and you'd be easy to see the white underneath it so here you see me dyeing it and it actually gives a really nice result and it takes dye really really well it is nylon so I'm assuming like with uh, people who watch like doll uh, videos like dyeing it like a monster high doll it was a very similar process and <laughs> I just took a, a little container and I made sure to run it under hot water when it was done because I'm totally fancy and you know that's my fancy contraption <laughs> Now, in retrospect, I should have customized the 
joints and pieces of the BJD before dyeing it, but I wasn't planning on doing any customization in terms of like adding clay and, and stuff to the pieces because I wanted this to be a more simpler project. It being totally new to me, I didn't want to do something that was too difficult, too intensive because I had no idea what I was doing it and I was just doing the go for it method the entire time. But I decided last minute since I'm making a bug type dragon that, you know, making some scales or some kind of spikes on the legs would lend more to that insect look and so I decided to do it and I'm actually glad I did because I really like how those turned out. I also decided to do it to the head as well where um, I wanted to make it a little bit longer and just uh, tweak it just a little bit to give more of that insect vibe with it. But uh, I, in hindsight, I wish I didn't use cost clay. Cost clay, of course, being a clay that once it's baked, it is extremely flexible and it is very versatile. The problem is, is that it, it can be very difficult to condition, especially more so when it's very cold and it, it coming into winter now, it made it very difficult to smooth the clay and it just was kind of a pain to work with, if I'm honest. And so sanding it and I tried to smooth it as much as possible but I didn't get that seamless and that smooth of result as I would have wanted say if I just used like super sculpty or something so that's something to consider if I ever try to use cost clay for something like this again um, to maybe just use normal clay but I also ended up adding um, antennas and that's the main reason I wanted to use cost clay is because cost clay is so flexible with something so delicate and small like the little antennas I didn't want them to be break and I wanted them to kind of be springy so um, I also thought it was a very cute idea to you know butterfly little, little antennas and, and it looked cute so you know I did it <laughs> All that being said, the pieces of the BJD accepted the clay very, very well and it stuck very, very well to them. So if anybody ever decides to purchase one of these, it is very easy to get the clay to stick and it's very customizable in that way. It has a slight texture to it that makes it easy for the clay to adhere to. One thing I do want to note for anybody who actually buys one of these and customize it, um, when you bake it in the oven, if you have pre-dyed it, it actually lightens the dye. So I just went back in and I painted the cost clay and the piece a more uniform color. Plus I want them all to end up being black at the extremities. So just pre-painting it black just made it easier for me to do a gradient later on when I do my airbrushing. Popping in for your not so daily reminder that if you've been thinking about doing something, if you've been watching these videos and you've been inspired and or just you've been thinking about a project that you've really wanted to do, but you've been sitting in your head and thinking you're like, I'm not good enough. I can't do it. I don't even know what to do. Just how about, how about, I don't understand. Hey. You stop that. You stop that right now, okay? I'm here to tell you that you can do the thing, okay? That project you've been thinking about it while this video is playing, go start it. Just write down, either plan it out or maybe get a materials list that you need. Or if you have everything, just start. The hardest part is starting. So look at here right now. I believe in you and you can go do the thing, okay? I love you so much. <laughs> I'd also like to share some wonderful art pieces. Look at these. Aren't they so good? Aren't they so wonderful? Mwah. Mwah. If you have been making any type of artwork, if you've been making an art doll, or you're just inspired by me and would you like me to see it and possibly share it on my next video, please use the hashtag KPTutorials so that I can find it. Okay, let's get back to the video. Okay, okay. First off, I'm going to do a major disclaimer Please do not use my video as any sort of tutorial or guide to how to string a BJD because I had no idea what I was doing and it was just, it was very laughable. It was very laughable. As you can see here, I first just tried to shove the elastic back in 
and I would just magically be able to pull it back out through the other side of where there's like a little hook on the inside. And when that didn't work, I was like, well, clearly I'm doing something wrong. So I tried to YouTube it because uh, references people references. I'll fit it in somewhere. References people references. I was using another video as a reference to try to figure out how to string this. <laughs> it was, I just, I remember the struggle and the absurdity of it all. Just me trying to be like, why won't this work? And how do I get this to work? And my brain isn't wired for this. And, and is this what people feel like when they try to make an art doll? And they're just like, how does KP do it? Cause I don't understand because I'm looking at other BGD, uh, <laughs> I'm looking at other BJD artists and they're just like, yeah, you just do this, this and this and it's done. And I'm just like, how? Oh my goodness. I don't understand. And I just, it just, just, it's, it was a journey. It was a journey. So please don't use any of this footage as actual advice or uh, tutorials to, to actually string it. If anyone does purchase this dragon, they are going to be making their own instructional video on how to string this. I was just uh, a little early for that video. So I had to kind of figure it out on my own. Uh, so it was quite the trip. <laughs> it's quite the trip because of that and because of the just sheer frustration i was going through a lot of this was done off camera and i'm so sorry i don't have like the fancy uh panning shots of me putting this together with you know plants in the background and wonderful sunlit lighting and and just the aesthetic you know like no i i was kind of crying in a corner at my editor just going why isn't it working fix it for me <laughs> <laughs> until I eventually was like okay no we're gonna we're gonna do this we got this we got this I might I I had to take like a day off to come back and be like okay we're gonna do it and I ended up stringing it all in that one day and I was very proud of myself so you know it <laughs> I'm just sorry that the footage is kind of all over the place <laughs> But here she is all strung back up and she does still hold all the same poses that she did before I took her apart and so I'm really proud of that fact. Like I have to remember this was my first BJD. This was the first customization doing anything with this type of art and just the fact that I got it to work and it still poses and I just I was very proud of myself. <laughs> So now it's time for my favorite thing to do and that is to airbrush gradients. Now the reason that the main body piece was orange is because I kind of want the um, main body and then the slight uh, edges of all the necks, the legs and stuff. I want that to be a gradient of the monarch butterflies colors but I want all the extremities the very outer extremities to be black and I want that to gradient together so I wanted the base colors of each one to reflect what the main color was going to be so that way if the paint ever chipped you would still just see the dyed color underneath and it wouldn't be like that stark white so it wouldn't be so jarring if it did ever chip that made sense right I feel like that makes sense Does that makes sense I hope that made sense that made sense and before I forget to mention to seal this piece, I did just take some of my normal varnish and I watered it down so it would fit through the airbrush and I just did three coats of that to make sure that the paint was sealed in and it would be as protected as possible. And then it was time to work on the main event for this dragon, which was the wings. And sorry for the slight uh, canoe, oh my God, continue, oh no, I can't say it continuity there we go continuity <laughs> why, why was that? that was such a brain fart <laughs> what i'm trying to say is some of these are from footage before the bjd was added to airbrushing stage so sorry for the continuity stuff but i had to make sure it was more seamless in this video but for the 
butterfly wings, I start off by cutting off the little tips of the wing joints that the BJD comes with using a Dremel. And I was very scared. <laughs> so you see me, I'm using like these little pliers to keep my hands as far away from it as possible. But after that, apparently I put my hands right next close to a freaking hand drill just in case I want to stab myself. <laughs> so safety, we don't know her. <laughs> But then I'm just hand drilling a hole into the joint to make sure I can insert a wire in. And to do that, I am using some epoxy glue just to make sure that that um, secure and is very hard and that wire that I'm going to be putting in is not going to be coming out because that is going to be the main armature that is going to keep the butterfly wings upright and straight and not flop all over. I'm also just using a template I created in Procreate. I'm just making sure that the wires are trimmed to that length so that they will stay as even as possible. And then I'm just tracing out that template in a thicker cotton fabric. Any type of thin fabric that will take paint well will work. I'm just using a, a thicker cotton fabric for this. And then I'm just making sure that I seal all the edges because this particular fabric frays a lot and I still don't have fray check from my last Mothman video because this is the same exact process. So I'm just making sure I seal it first this time before I paint it because I learned last time that I should probably have done that first. And then it is just the wonderful process of painting so many wings to make sure that this worked because the issue I learned last time was that I did one piece and I just painted the front and back of that piece and then I like glued it to wire. The issue was is that it showed the wire and it didn't look very good. So this time what I'm going to do is I'm taking two separate pieces and I'm going to sandwich the wire inside of that and I'm just hoping that that'll have a nicer finish and not have like a weird edge or the wire showing at all and it'll look a lot more seamless which it does so it, it worked out very very well but because of that that just made it that much more tedious because I made double the amount of work for each wing that I wanted to bake and at some points like for right here with the um, painting of the black veins and stuff that are in the butterfly wings I just put on some music and, and it was kind of relaxing and stuff at least in the beginning but when you're doing it at like the 10th time it gets a little tedious <laughs> so i just made sure to take it nice and slow so that i didn't start like half doing it because i was overdoing it and we just made sure we took our time with it and it was nice and lovely and the end result is absolutely beautiful and i'm so happy with how these turned out As I mentioned earlier here, I am just joining the two pieces of the fabric together and just making sure that they, I love how I say it, making sure that they line up correctly, even though like, as you can see, they clearly don't because I didn't match the templates at all and they, <laughs> and I had to cut them to make sure that they matched again and then painted the cut that I made. Just, just me, it's just me things. <laughs> But I used Fabri-Tac as a glue and I wasn't sure if that was actually going to work or not because I didn't really have any other glue and I I didn't want to use hot glue because I figured that would leave ridges and stuff and Mod Podge I didn't trust it enough to hold together so I used Fabri-Tac and that ended up working really really well and I'm really surprised by that so if I ever do these again Fabri-Tac is absolutely the way to go and then after that it's just repeat the same process over over and over again you know because I wanted pretty little frills on the dragon's head and I wanted a little cute butterfly tail and so you know what that means you base coat it and you paint gradients on it again and then you go in and you paint on the little black veins and then you add the little white dots to make it all nice and cute <gasps> and it's just a lot <laughs> of painting <laughs> 
Clearly my brain was so fried after painting that I forgot to film me epoxying the dragon joint to the butterfly wings just to make that transition a little bit more seamless and then I just went and painted that black to match the butterfly wing. At first I thought about giving the dragon yellow eyes, but then I realized that that matched too much with the color palette that was already going on. So then I decided to give it green metallic eyes just to give it a little bit more pop of color. And I really like how that turned out. And I also like how the metallic looked. It gave me more of a bug vibe and it was also just pretty to look at. So it's a win-win. Then to glue the tail and the little frill that I made, I ended up using super glue because my fabric tag at that point was at the very last bit of it. So it was kind of all chunky and stuff and I still didn't trust Mud Podge and I definitely didn't want to use hot glue because it was such a thin piece of a fabric that I needed to connect. So I ended up just using super glue and it ended up working just fine. And then the final step was to string the butterfly wings onto the dragon, which at this point, I slightly knew what I was doing. As you can see, I seem to just have a little bit more knowledge about how I was going about this. And it seems to be going a lot more smoother. And I, I'm a little bit more in frame than I was. So <laughs> only a little bit though, because the wings were still big and it was just really chunky to try to get everything in frame. But at this point, I finally learned kind of what I was doing. And so it went a lot smoother with stringing the butterfly wings. And I just, I love the end result. And after that, this piece is finally done and we can take her outside for the final shots. This was quite a wild ride and I'm so glad I ended up doing and it just shows that it is definitely okay and it can be crazy and frustrating and fun to try something new. So please go out today and just try something new. And thank you guys for so much for watching this video. I just want to give a quick shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for your support. It means so much for me. So much for me. It means, well, it does mean so much for me <laughs> and it means so much to me. <laughs> I am a hazard today, but thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I'm going to go now. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Okay. Bye. You kissies. <laughs> I'm out of breath again. Hold on. I'm going to do a jump cut. <laughs> Why do I never breathe while I do these? Because I love you guys so much. I just got to get it all out quickly. <laughs> okay.